I'm going to be talking about a project that we're involved in at UCSF uh, called DataShare and share some of the lessons we've learned along the way. I'll be talking, um, kind of give you an overview of what DataShare is, what the product tool looks like, talk about our publicity and marketing efforts, discuss some of the case studies of the type of researchers we've interacted with, and end with some lessons learned and some of our next steps as we go forward. Um, a little bit about UCSF, in case some of you don't know, because I know there are a lot of uh, non-medical libraries here, librarians here. Um, UCSF is uh, part of the 10 UC campuses. We are unique, though, in that we are a, a graduate, studi graduate studies health sciences only university. So we have schools of medicine, nursing, dentistry, and pharmacy, as well as graduate studies. But we have no undergraduates, no arts and humanities. So it kind of narrows our focus a little bit, um, which I, in talking to my other UC colleagues, is sometimes very good. <laughs> Um, so DataShare is really an open data repository for the UCSF researcher at this point. Um, the project started in 2011 with Mike Weiner, who is a professor of radiology, and he approached the UCSF Clinical and, and Translational Sciences Institute in order to develop this product. He really believed that there needed to be a place for UCSF researchers to share their data widely. Um, his work on the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative really showed that open data can improve science. Since the project started, though, in 2011, I think we've all seen kind of this open data movement really starting to take off. There was kind of the open access, which talked about publications, but last year with FASTER and then with the OSTP directive, really they started talking about data and making the data, the underlying data of the studies available. In 2014, everyone heard about the PLOS new data policy, and, and we were talking to PLOS about it. They were saying, well, you know, actually, we have this data policy. We've just now kind of given some teeth to it. And so the, I think publishers are starting to become more interested in making the, the underlying data behind the publications that they're um, producing available to a wider audience. When we started the project, um, our goal was pretty simple. It's to simplify data deposit for UCSF researchers in order to facilitate wide share data share, widespread data sharing. When we started it, when actually it was CTSI who started the project, we were out using the Dataverse network platform. And in using it, it kind of provided the, t the, the platform that would allow people to share, but it became obvious that there were issues with it. One was that the metadata was way too complicated. Researchers are like, I don't have time to be able to fill out all this metadata. It also, the interface was too complicated. They said, you know, I wasn't sure what was required or wasn't required. And also they felt like it wasn't health sciences enough, that it was, it was, it was too different for what they felt their needs were. Um, so basically it was a kind of a right idea but the wrong platform. So CTSI approached California Digital Library, Carly Strasser's will speak um, later this afternoon, to see if Merit, which is their digital repository, would be able to be used for this product. And uh, Merit offered the back, the back end. They had, could store and preserve the data, but what they didn't have was a front end in order to have easy deposit of data for the researcher. And that's kind of where the library started being involved. As we started moving the process forward, we talked about, you know, well, what are we trying to develop? We're trying to develop a tool that's user-centered, has an easy-to-use interface, is self-service so that there's no staff intervention required, requires minimal metadata, and there are pros and cons of this, and also is format and subject agnostic. So we're really talking about trying to provide a place where anyone can put their uh, data required, specifically around publication requirements or funder requirements. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through some slides about data share so you can see what the interface looks like. We did realize that getting people to share their data was gonna be challenging because um, researchers had told us that submitting data sets anywhere was expensive, it was time consuming, it was really cumbersome. So again, kind of thinking about what our goals were, we decided to build an upload tool that would simplify this process. The upload tool basically provides a simplified interface that allows the researcher to upload the data set, provide limited metadata around it, and then package and submit the object to the repository. 
We also realized that a stumbling block was that people didn't, they kind of sat down and they didn't know what was required of them. So we wanted to let them, give them information about, even before you start this process, what information are you gonna be asked for? So we created some short descriptions of the f fields that were um, included in the submission form and also the required fields. So they'd sit down and they could start the process and go start to end really quickly. We also um, tied, used Shibboleth and tied the, the data share to our single sign-on system, MyAccess at UCSF. Um, and this turns out to be not an insignificant barrier of people wanting to use a system, right? They don't want to have to remember a new username and password. And so um, that was uh, more challenging than we had hoped, but we were able to do it. So the form required in order to share your data, it, describe your data, is very simple. It doesn't have many required fields. We have some um, help so that if someone, for example, doesn't remember what data type means, that it gives them examples of what type of information they may provide in there. And then it's an opportunity to upload your data set. We wanted to create this really easy and have it kind of be an interface that people were familiar with, so there is a drag and drop option. Um, also, if you have multiple set uh, files, you can also do a choose use the file picker and select multiple files to upload. And then it allows you to upload files individually. So if you have a large file, you might not want to, if you have several large files, you might not want to upload them all at the same time. It also allows you to delete them and, ed and um, add them as you go along through the process. The system checks the metadata to make sure the required metadata is there. And then um, when you go to say you're ready to send it to data share, the data set is packaged and sent to the data share repository, which is Merit. It receives a DOI and has a citation, and then the records are available in my data sets. So in the my data set area, people then can go back to the data sets they've submitted, they can edit the metadata, they could add more files, they could delete files, et cetera. Um, when you actually go into data share, you're in the data share um, environment, which allows you to search and browse for data, but also they're indexed in the ISI data citation index in Google and also as part of the Data One um, Federation. So it is uh, uh, making them available more than just kind of in this really narrow uh, interface. The search and, and browse field is pretty easy. It's we provide faceted searching so that you can narrow your search by author or by sub uh, keyword. Um, when you select a field, when you select a, a study, it gives you more information about the study. It gives you description of what the study is about, as well as methods used to collect the data. If you decide, if a user decides to download the data, they're given a standardized data use agreement, which basically spells out what they sh can and can't do with it, and they have to um, agree to this before they can actually download the data. Once they submit it, an uh, email is sent to them, so it reminds them of the requirements, and it's also submitted, uh, sent to the owner of the data set so they're aware that someone's actually downloaded their data. And then we wanted to make it easy that someone can cite the data set, so we provide the DOI and also a format on how to cite this. So that was just a really quick run through of the whole thing. Um, so DataShare was in soft launch for quite a while. And soft launch was basically the access and discovery portion was available, but then in order to upload data, you had to actually talk to a staff member and they would take the data and they would do all the process for you. Um, the final system was that I just demonstrated or just showed was released in October of 2013. And when we released it, we started to do quite a bit of publicity to try and get the word out about it, let people know that this was an option and available to them. We were also trying to find kind of early adopters so that we could sit down and talk to them about what their usage was and how they use it and actually walk them through the pro sit, the sit with them as they walk through the process. Um, Faculty told us that even though it's not particularly effective, email is still a really good way to get a hold of them. I love it. It's like, it's not effective, but use it anyway. Um, <laughs> So uh, we did a lot of email, kind of targeted email blasts. We, we looked at researchers who had either funding or uh, publishing requirements. So looked at people in, using PLOS and Science and um, Nature who have uh, data sharing requirements and also the people who have NIH grants with over $500,000 a year in funding. 
sent emails to them. That was about 400 people. We sent out to a list of data managers and lab managers because we figure, in fact, they're the people that are actually handling the data, and they're the ones who are usually having to deal with the data when they get requests for it after a study is published. And then we have a small open access fund for about a year and a half, and we have about 30 people who have received funding from us. About half of those um, actually published in PLOS titles, and so we emailed them specifically, thinking that if they're interested in open access, they may be interested in open data. We also did a fair number of presentations. We presented as part of our OA, OA Week um, events. We're doing group presentations to people, often about data management, and then we talk about data sharing as part of that. Um, there was a campus-wide tech fair that we were a participant in. It's a huge fair that uh, has several hundred people coming through and often faculty and uh, postdocs. And then, excuse me, we integrated into some of the classes. The postdocs had a, a new class that was, and I'm going to read it because I can never remember the exact title, Responsible Conduct of Research for Postdoctoral Scholars. And it was a six-session class that covered all of the areas of responsible conduct of research. There was one about data management, sharing, and ownership, and we participated in that, as did Carly, to talk about these issues. Um, we also had a session about data management and just open data in general for the um, biomedical sciences program graduate students. So it was a lot of work over the kind of four, four months that we had uh, since we'd released it. And I wish I could tell you that you know, we were just inundated with all these data sets and that everyone wanted to, to use our tool, but I'd be lying because as is often the case, we do all this work and it, we get kind of uh, limited uh, bang for our buck. But we like to think about quantity over quality, or quality over quantity, wait, other way around. <laughs> quality over quantity. Um, and we did, have, we did have people who are interested, and really those discussions with them have been very um, helpful in understanding what their needs are and kind of what their use cases are. And so that's what I'll be covering um, in the last part of my talk, is really some case studies of the type of people, researchers that we've interacted with, and how DataShare kind of helped or didn't help them. So our first case study is with a data management consultant. She works with actually a number of researchers on data management, um, but kind of is focused on women's health. And I love her quote. She said, we're done with this data. We've picked all the fruit. And this is exactly the type of data that really data share is meant to, to house. So it was an NIH um, study. It was concluded. They had published the findings. They were finished with it. They didn't have any use for it at this point. But they were starting to receive requests from other researchers, people saying, you know, we're interested in the underlying data behind your paper. And they said they were finding it really cumbersome because they had to repackage it every time and then send it via email. They didn't even have a website that they were making it available on. It was also um, kind of problematic because there's no obvious home for the data. There wasn't a subject repository that made sense. It wasn't, you know, genomic data that they could put in some one of the NCBI repositories. It was just kind of one of these, like Raj was talking about, one of these small data sets that didn't have any place to live. And so data set, data share actually was really perfect for this, this situation. Um, they were able to upload the data really quickly. They were able to get a DOI and a page for the data set. And so now when they get requests for it, they can just point people to that page and say, all the data is available here. You can download it and use it. Um, and one thing I was thinking as I was doing this presentation is we should go back and see if they can quantify at all, you know, kind of how, much, how many requests they've received and um, how much time it saved them. Our second case study is a malarial researcher, and he has tons of sequencing data that he's interested in sharing. Um, he's inter he really is interested in sharing his data, but he says just the current method that he has to use is too costly, and not really in terms of money, but in terms of time. Um, he wants to get his data out there, and currently he's using mostly his website in order to make it available. But he's also been depositing uh, data in the read sequence archive at NCBI. And SRA is free to use. There's no cost to store anything, but he said that there's a huge cost in time for anyone who has to deposit the data. He's like, you know, they're really difficult to deal with. There's a lot of back and forth. Their forms are really cumbersome. Um, he wanted something quick and easy to use where he could get a link and a DOI to basically give people as they, when they request his information. So DataShare kind of met some of his needs. The current repository he said was too cumbersome. He walked through DataShare. He was really pleased with how easy it was, how fast the upload was. 
Um, you know, the time cost was very low for him. We're not quite sure about actual costs, but he said, you know, I am willing to pay if I don't have to deal with RS, uh, RS, SRA. But where this actually kind of data share didn't work for him was his actual data set size. And I was going to say large data set, but after hearing Raj and talking about petabytes, then it's not so large. But, <laughs> um, but he said, you know, an average size of one of his studies is 175 gigabytes, and that's in compressed data. And that's just one of his studies. And you know, he's got multiple studies going on. And, and currently, the way data share is set up, we can't upload a data, site, a, a data set that large. And we're not even sure we could download it. We did a lot of work working on larger data sets around 40 gigabytes, but we didn't try anything over 50 or even close to 100. Um, the other issue he had was long-term storage. And he's talking here about 20 plus years. His interpretation of the UC data policy says is that he's required to keep his data available for 20 plus years. And we, in looking at the policies and trying to actually find out which policy he was talking about, it seems like it's a policy written about lab notebooks and, and it's you know the paper lab notebooks. And so obviously those policies haven't been updated since more research is going online. So it's uncertain as to kind of how that will work. But but you know at this point. I don't think we're quite ready to say we can promise 20 years. We're talking 10 years, perhaps. Um, so it's kind of uncertain how that will work out in the long term. What he did do, though, is he had some, quote, smaller studies of only two gigs. Um, and so he's able to use data share for that. So it's, it's kind of a partial, meet, partial, partially meets his needs. The third uh, case study is really, really pretty simple. There were two people who were saying, you know, I'm in the process, it's like, great, I heard about this data share process, I'm really interested in it, I'm writing a grant, I have a resource sharing section I have to write, can you help me with it? And so we were able to give them some wording that talked about data share and how they would use data share in order to fulfill the resource sharing plans. Um, it was really an immediate need to fill this grant proposal at that time. We haven't heard whether or not it's been, they've been funded. We need to circle back and actually find out. Um, but I do think in some ways that this last case study is, is what we would like to, to head towards. We'd like to get the, the tool in, in, a, in the place where they're writing their grant proposal so that they'll put it into their grant proposals and then put a line item for their budget into the grant proposal as well so that they can then pay for it. Um, you know, that is the optimal scenario, I think. Catching them before they have actually started their research and started the process is key, and that then budgeting for the costs as well. We also, I just thought I would mention, we had some other discussions, and they were also really useful, but they were use cases that, in fact, DataShare wasn't appropriate for. We had one person who was saying that they were working with outside collaborators, and currently DataShare is closed to UCSF only. Um, so we need, had someone else who really needed a HIPAA-compliant repository, and we're not trying to to uh, fulfill that need. There are other resources on campus that are doing that. And then there's a data set that if it were static, it would have actually been perfect, but in fact, they were continuously updating it. And so we're like, you know, data share isn't a good resource for that. And so they were useful because we could understand what their needs were. We could also, because we were aware of kind of what was going on at UCSF, and it's, it's somewhat, um, hard to find out what resources are available at UCSF to people. We were able to point them in the direction of maybe tools that were more appropriate for their needs. But it was also good to hear that these were some of the concerns that they had and that, that these were some of the issues that they wanted solutions for. So I'm just going to cover really briefly uh, the lessons learned and some of our, some of our next steps. Um, so the first one is it's really hard to get noticed. You know, we sent out all that email, we did all the presentations, people are really, you know, a lot of times when we talk to someone and they need it, they're like, this is great, I wish I had known about this, you know, two months ago, why didn't you guys do any publicity? You know, that's only when you whack your head and you're like, I don't know how much more publicity we can do. So it's, it's just hard to get noticed at a point where, and to make it so that it's relevant to them and, and one, to try and have them remember when they need it, oh, there's a tool out there somewhere that's gonna help me. Um, I think the other thing that's hard is that it's, it's hard to break into existing patterns of data sharing. So a lot of times right now, you know, people make data available upon request. That's kind of their solution to resource or data sharing. Um, the other thing that a lot of people are doing are cramming all the data into supplemental materials in their publications. And I think as long as, fun, as, as that's, a, that's okay with funding agencies and publishers, that it's really hard to get 
the researchers to change their behavior because they're like, hey, it's worked for me in the past. Why do I have to do anything different? And I think that is going to start changing as, you know, like PLOS has made their statement. I don't think entering into supplementary uh, data is considered appropriate. PLOS doesn't consider that sharing your data. They want it in more of a repository type of environment. Um, and then also just kind of as the changes are happening with uh, funding areas. So I think that will eventually come, but it is hard if, if it's kind of worked for them in the past and it's, it's like, you know, I had a data sharing policy before and this was okay, why do I change it? Um, user feedback is key. So and having all these conversations with people about how they are using data share or sitting down with them and watching them use data share and kind of doing talk alouds has been really useful because they've brought up issues that we obviously didn't think of. And so this goes back to it being user centered. Um, and then kind of wrapping back to the, it's hard to get noticed and it's even hard to break, um, harder to break existing patterns, is that we, we think that inserting data share into the place where they have the need and the point of pain is really going to be critical in order, getting it, in order to get it adopted. And so that kind of follows into our next steps. Um, I'm going to skip down a little bit. One of the things that we're doing is talking to our Office of Sponsored Research because they're the people that are working with the researchers as they're writing grant proposals. And so trying to talk to them, make them aware of, of the tool that's available. Um, we're looking at uh, integrating it into the data management plan tool that I don't know if Carly's going to talk about um, this afternoon. She says yes. Um, so we're looking to integrate it into that. We're also working with them, so we say, like, you know, does this meet your needs? What can we do in order to change it, in order to change the wording so it does meet your needs? Because some of them already have kind of standard uh, templates that they're using for that. So I think really trying to work with those groups is key, and, and the Research Development Office at UCSF is the group that deals with multi-PI um, proposals, is inter has talked to us, and we need to kind of continue our conversation of, well, maybe the library should be at the kickoff meetings for these, these proposals, and you, know, you can start talking about data management, and we we're also talking about just citation management, which is an issue. Um, we'll continue doing marketing and outreach and then continue to do our usability studies and our user interviews because I really think that will help drive development going forward. We are also a little bit strange. We kind of started at the end of the data life cycle. We started with data sharing and it was really because an opportunity was presented to us with working with CTSI and CDL. But we don't really have much of a, a toolkit. We don't really have a lot of dialogue going on at UCSF about data management in general. And so really trying to figure out, you know, what do we want for our data management services and educational tools? And kind of developing that and using some of the tools available at CDL to provide more of an environment that talks about data sharing and data management. And then there's been great interest in a UC-wide level of the libraries to, to adopt data share individually. It was developed in such a way that people could brand it so that it's, you know, data share at, C, at uh, Berkeley or data share at Davis. Um, and that we would uh, then participate in that further development. And so I just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge the participants, the CTSI who got this started along with Mike Weiner at UCSF, the people at the UCSF library who, who were really involved in this, and then obviously our CDL partner um, and who uh, helped make this service available. So the website is datashare.ucsf.edu. Unfortunately, you can only see the find and, and download portion of it. The upload portion is uh, restricted to UCSF. And then, um, email for myself, and then Megan Lawrence, who is our research informationist and has really been the person who's been going out and doing all this publicity and outreach and doing the user interviews and really talking to the researchers. So thank you very much. <laughs>